Welcome back, everybody. We are going to do a quick tutorial today. Well, I hope it's quick. Try not to make it an hour long like I did the last one. Um, today, I want to show you how to do, to, uh, do this uh, biomechanical paneling that I've done, that I've been experimenting with lately. It's some of my older techniques and a blend of my newer techniques. And uh, it really really came out really really well uh, this one here uh, it was done a key shot uh, it has a real nice translucent material uh, blended in with the uh, tech panels and stuff like that and then the one that I just did today is this uh, old project of mine kind of blending an alien head and a skull and it I thought well this one definitely needed this treatment and it turned out really well so today I'm not going to show you how to make an alien head or anything. I'm going to just show you how to get all this intricate panels and stuff like that. Uh, we'll, we'll be inside uh, ZBrush for most of it, and then I'll take you into KeyShot to show you how to get a nice translucent material going with a bunch of different colors and stuff like that. So let's go ahead and get started, and let's head right into ZBrush. All right, we're back here in ZBrush now. Uh, first, I want you to go ahead and load up. Let's see here. Do, do, do. Load up uh, Greeble Elements. Uh, this is version 1.1. So it's got a couple new features inside it. Uh, real quick, go ahead and change your document size to uh, a 1K file. Actually, let's go ahead and do a 2K. 2048 by 2048. And then go ahead and resize. And then zoom it out to where it fits in the whole screen. And we'll go ahead and change the to a basic material. And now we'll drag out our Greeble elements here. And if anybody's watched the past couple of videos, you know what I'm talking about here. And Greeble elements is just going to help us make our texture for our uh, for our panels. So go ahead and hit solo. And then if you want, just hit in. And we're going to go ahead and make up our make up our texture real quick. If you notice in here, uh, there's uh, looks like five new sub tools in here. Uh, we're going to go ahead and go to CPU. So just uh, a quick little model. It looks like a CPU there. Um, let me get X symmetry off of that. I don't need that on there. And a cool thing about the CPU real quick, if you go under nano mesh and activate it, it's got a nano mesh built into it. So, and if you want, you can go in there and you can randomize it real quick. Kind of get the way you want to look here. So, it doesn't have to be anything too crazy. So, we can go ahead and close up that panel. I'm good with that. So, we're going to snap him in the center of the canvas here. So, Shift S. And then you can move him off. And we'll go ahead and change our subtool. Get my piano keys here. Get them going. As I've said before, they make great textures. And that's why I am always using it. So Shift S to stamp it down. And I'm going to flip him over. And then just try to merge these two together there. Not doing the. There we go. And Shift S. Move him over here. Turn him the other way. Not that way. Not that way. There we go. And then Shift S, move him down. Let's change up the, let's make him into which panel? I like this one here is nice. And see, let's put one there. Shift S, another one there. Shift S. Okay. Now go ahead and take it out of edit mode, and use your tilde key which should be right above your tab key. Push and hold it down and get everybody centered in the middle of the screen there. As you can see, everything is a uh, seamless tile. Now we're going to just kind of tie everything together real quick. So drag out your Greeble element again. T for edit. And let's turn off that X symmetry. Let's turn it off. Huh. Okay. So let's go ahead and let's get some filler in here. 
So we can get some of these other circuit panels. Just little circuit clusters. I don't know what they are. They just look cool, so we'll just smack a couple down in here. So shift S, move over here, maybe flip them over, and then we'll move them again, scale them down, shift S. Alrighty, I think uh, we're good there. We got our texture. All we got to do is put it into our alpha create an alpha out of it so go down to transfer on your alpha palette and then just do a grab dock and there you go as you can see it's kinda hard to see but it created a depth map for us so go ahead and export them out and make sure you make it a TIFF file it's already set up for me for that one so go ahead and let's go ahead and initialize get everything back to back to the start which means I gotta change back to a basic material and like I said I'm not gonna make anything too complicated for you so I'm gonna start with a sphere 3D just drag and drop them out there T for edit change them into a poly mesh okay so now he's editable if you hit X on the keyboard that will bring up your symmetry we'll keep him symmetrical and we can turn the poly frame on it doesn't really matter uh, just go move topology. We're just going to create some interesting topology real quick, just for grins and giggles. We'll probably dynamesh this. If you, get the, if you get a larger draw size, it tends to work a little bit better. Just to be on the safe side, we will go ahead and just dynamesh him real quick. Just to make sure topology is nice and even across everything. May actually drop the resolution. Just go down 32. We don't need that much. There we go. Alright, so what I want to do now, hit B on the keyboard. And you want to do S. We're looking for our slices and slice circle. And what we want to do is add some uh, topology to this. So we're going to slice this guy up. So if you do a control shift, let me do that one more time. As you can see, it's the circle slice up here. If you go under stroke and actually get this over to square, it'll make a nice perfect circle. And we're just going to add some circles in here real fast. This is just going to help give us some interesting topology here in a second. So do a turn dynamesh off. We can go down to Z remesher, turn on keep groups, and we've got symmetry on, so it will make a symmetrical model for us. Not too bad. We're in the eight thousands there. We probably can do with half of that, really. Alright, there we go. Now, let's start having fun here. Let's go ahead and do a, not a polygroup, we want to give it a UV map real quick. Raise it to 4096. Uh, GUV is what we're looking for. Go in your geometry real quick. Actually, we don't want to do that just yet. We want to do polygroups first. Auto group by UV. And to get like these little onesie twosies out of here, you can just hit merge stray and it'll take them out and combine them with a neighboring polygroup. And it looks like uh, we got a little more interesting topology or grouping on the right side of the model here as opposed to the left because I like that nice line right there. Go to your deformation and just hit mirror. Now it throws it on the left side. Now if you do a mirror and weld operation, now we've held on to that right there. So, okay, 
we're almost to the point where we're going to start making some nice little panel lines going on in here. But you don't have to be stuck with just what it gives you. If you go into Z Modeler real quick, right click, go to Polygroup, select Poly Loop and Poly Group. So it's going to go along the Poly Loop, but it'll stop at a, at another Poly Group. So if you watch this here, as you can see, it stopped. Let me get a different color here. If you click and hold and then tap the Alt, it'll change the ID of it. So we're just going to give it a few extra loops in here. And then we'll just go around the model a little bit and add some more lines here and there. Make sure we're going the right way. Alright, I'm content with that. Now let's frame him up there and go to your edge loop and under the group group loops here, leave it at 450, just turn off triangle and go ahead and do group loops. Alright, now it's made our nice little uh, lines here. a little tight here and there, but that's alright. I think I could live with it. So we basically want the pink and that blue right there. So, oops, change your, go back to a select rectangle on your uh, selection, and then reverse it, and go under polygroups real quick, and we are just going to make him just group visible. Make all those extra panels. One. Let me get an oddball color in there. There we go, so we can see it better. Alright, so now we'll go ahead and select him again. And if you click off the model, it'll mask it by hitting control. And then now we can inflate everything real quick. You can either do it in deformation or you can do it manually just by going to the inflate. Increase your size a bit, and we'll turn the polyline off. It's a little messy, but that's all right. Gets a little variety going in there, because you can always come back and smooth. And you can even go to your deformation panel and smooth there as well. And then just keep on hitting repeat to active you get what you're looking for. Of course, at this point, I don't really know what I'm looking for. I'm just trying to get something that looks good. Alright, so let's go ahead and clear a mask. And real quick, uh, since we did those uh, group loops and all that, we have to give it a... we have to remap it again. So just do GUV tiles and go into your geometry real fast and go modify and mirror and weld. So this way we get symmetrical uh, tiling when we apply our uh, texture. And you'll see it here in a minute. But first I want to do a dynamic subdivision. Kind of keep our uh, file size small. And we increase him until as you can see up here it's going to be a 2.6 million poly uh, model when it renders out. But it'll only save it as a 10,000K model. So that's pretty cool. So let's go ahead and do our do a quick texture in here. So let's select. Eh, i got to turn that on so I can see it. So I'll make sure I hit both groups. And go under visibility. Not uh, visibility. You want display. Where's display? There it is. Double. Now we can see both sides of the model. Go ahead and we want to inverse the selection. 
mask them again. And we want to just go up to switch your color. Go up to, where is it at? Color. And do fill object. Okay. And switch your color back to white. Clear the mask. There we go. So let's go ahead and make that selection one more time. And let's go ahead and find like an off white here. Just go in the yellows a little bit. Just do like off white fill object. Okay. So real quick, select him, create a mask, make everything visible again, reverse your mask by uh, clicking outside the canvas and dragging real fast, control drag, and now the mask has been reversed. Let's go to like a standard, turn off, now hit shift and then turn off Z-Add, and now you can see it's just going to affect the RGB. Let me turn off, where is it at? Let me turn off dynamic real fast. Let me go back, turn off dynamic. Let's see. kind of bleeding off that black color here and there. And that's going to help us when we uh, apply our texture map too. We're going to be able to use that as a mask. There's other ways you could do this. There's a, a mask by border feature inside the masking panel. And I can show you that here in a second. That comes in quite handy. But this is kind of a quick and dirty way of doing it. Alright, so let me turn dynamic back on. Do a quick smooth over everything one more time. You'll notice that it's very sluggish trying to do any sort of manipulating when you have dynamic subdivision on it, so just be aware of that when you do it. Okay, so now it's time to put that texture on there. And that's going to create our surface uh, noise and everything here. And we're using surface noise, of course. Let me zoom, let me frame him, see if he'll frame him up there a little bit better. All right, we want to select UV. We want to put our alpha that we created. So we just go grab him real quick. Uh, we do flip H. Turn off mix basic noise. Okay. And we can reverse the strength so it goes out. And we start scaling him down a bit. zoom in so we can see a little better what it's doing. As you can see it's putting all that nice uh, circuitry and CPU and all that in there for us. Make it look nice and neat. Let me increase the strength. And let's see. I wonder if we go up a little bit bigger. That'll make it pop a little better. We'll just keep it small. We'll have to test it. You have to, you have to test uh, what size works for you. So change your color blend to one, and change him all the way to black. There we go. Now that blends in a lot better with our texture. All right. I'm just going to do a quick test here and do a quick BPR. 
because right now it's just a preview. I want to see how far the it stretches out there. Eh. It's not bad, but let me see. Can we raise our... No. Okay. That's, a, that's the only problem I have with dynamic subdivision. It only goes so high. So we're going to turn that off real fast. And we're just going to do the old school divide. Oops. Make sure we don't have a mask on. And now divide. Divide. Because we need about 10 plus million to really get a decent texture out of this. And remember, you can always uh, you can always decimate the model, do a BPR to Geo, and you'll be okay. So real quick, uh, I want to want to select and go back down. Okay, I got them now. I guess I didn't need to do that, did I? Just inverse. Shift and... Yeah, it's not going to work for us. Hold on. Mask it. Inverse it. Alright. And we're just going to... Uh, come on. Let me lower the subdivision a little bit here. Doesn't like playing with me tonight. goes now it's working just trying to blend those colors a little bit more together there all right let's clear the mask now if you go under your mask in you can do a mask by intensity then inverse it let me go back Yeah, I'm not going to worry about it. Just do a mask by intensity, inverse. And then you can turn, oops, turn him up. Let's clear it. Mask by intensity one more time. Inverse. Let me sharpen that mask. Sharpen it. And blur. view off. And there we go. Now it's kind of bleeding off on the larger panels. You don't really see it on the center portion, which is nice. And let's do a quick BPR real quick. Looks like we got a little better results because the higher subdivision. We can always up the surface just a little bit because this is very small scale. Since it's relative, the strength is relative to the scale, the smaller the scale, the smaller the displacement. some larger deformations there.
and sometimes uh, the textures you're using don't necessarily uh, work for what you're trying to do you know so if we're having difficulties with this particular texture you can always uh, get another one and bring it in uh, actually what you want to do what you can do I'm not sure if you knew you can actually save these out so say like save this and this would be surface one that'll work I don't know we want two okay so let me open it up and let me get one that I'm that I've used in the past I just gotta change the adjustments here zoom out here so you're not limited to just you know one texture make up a bunch of textures and then go to town see what kind of results you get like I said some work a lot better than others do so see that one's looking a lot better Let's do a quick BPR and then I think we'll take it over to Keyshot and I'll show you how to do that there. Not too bad. Okay. So we're just going to say that's good. And before I send it over to Keyshot, I want you guys to import a material real quick just load it in it's called biotech and just load him in real fast uh, it's got a reflective material to it uh, I'm not really interested in necessarily the reflective part of it that will transfer transfer over to Keyshot which will add a little bit to our kind of featureless areas it'll add a little more color variety to it so let's go ahead and send him over to Keyshot and I will pick this up over there so be back in just a minute alright alright here we are inside Keyshot everybody's all loaded up in here let's zoom in real quick so we take a look at our model like I said some of that reflection came over which is kinda neat it's gonna add a little more detail to it and let's go ahead and it uh, the material I use is just a translucent material, so I've got a couple saved in here. Oh, you got. And like I said in previous uh, tutorials, definitely save your uh, materials that you like. Then you can just drag and drop right on them. And if you hold down the Alt, it'll retain the, the texture map that followed it over from ZBrush. And as you can see already, it's got a little more character to it and let me uh, load up that texture here so you can see what it is uh, the surface color let me click on it real quick here's the RGB here is red 173 green 170 blue 170 and then subsurface color 250 77 and 42 and I've got the roughness at 0.107 refraction 1.4 samples at 25 uh, the the only thing to note when you're uh, rendering one of these things out, because I render it about you know just a quick examples for you know to test things out. I I render it about 2,000 uh, pixels wide, and it takes uh, the alien one I did. It took about four and a half hours to render. So translucent materials uh, look pretty as all can all get out, but they take forever to render. So if that's what you're looking for, definitely do it. You know, it's it's worth the wait. So definitely, if you want to do it, uh, I'd set it up overnight, let it render out overnight, come back in the morning, and then play with it. Okay, so we're not done yet with this material because the cool thing about translucent materials is, well, they refract light and light passes through them and stuff like that so if anybody's seen my tutorials before you know I love to put lights inside my objects because they just look too cool so I'm gonna scale this sphere down real quick and I did this on 
I, I, I put a light inside one of these the other day and I was just like, oh wow. So that's why I'm doing this tutorial now because it just turned out too cool. So uh, let me make sure I got him all the way inside. Looks like I do. Let me raise him up towards the top. If that is the top, I'm not sure. Alright, so I'm good with that. Now we open up the material. We're just going to give him a red color. So red 255 and zero on green and blue. Click OK. And now change him to area light diffuse. And we get a much different look. And we can, you can, you can experiment with the, the color. We can lower it, give it a deeper, darker red. You know, if it's not red enough for you, you can crank up the wattage. You can even experiment with colors. You can make it a yellow or green light or a blue. I think I threw a purple in one the other day and it's just, I never got it rendered out, but it, it turned out really cool. So you can do a lot of fun things with this. So usually I just stick with the red because it kind of looks like the subsurface of uh, someone's skin. But yeah, that's basically it with the with the translucent texture. Uh, here in Keyshot, uh, I found one environment that works really well. Let me turn off the so we don't see the environment necessarily. I'm just gonna turn it to a gray color. But this environment here, which you can download, and it's called Indoor Factory, and then drag and drop it. I tend to get the best results. It gives you just that eerie matrix look and feel. And I really like it. So you get the nice shiny reflections from the lights up top. You know, and then as I said before you can adjust the size to tighten up or if you bring it up, it'll bring them up. Just depends what look you're looking for. But yeah, you can do a lot of fun things with this here. Uh, like I said, just remember, uh, it does take a while. Okay. Um, also, when you render these out in Keyshot, I like to render out one other pass that doesn't take long at all. You know, always make sure you lock down your camera before you render. So this way, when you come back, you don't accidentally move the camera. And then you can slap on another material. And this is the material I like to use. I found this one out last month and it's a flat it's a flat material but it uses curves to generate the texture let me load him up so you can see what he's doing here so it's pretty it's relatively flat but you go into the if you do texture type you do curvature and then make a negative curvature of black zero curvature of white and then I did this positive curvature of like 223, 223, and 222 on the RGB. And then you can see the cutoff 2.93, and 8 samples. And then I'll render him out, and then I'll do it as a multiply uh, layer in Photoshop. And it'll take all those nice curved colors, and then make sure you, on your settings, you turn off, or environment, you turn off ground shadows. Make sure it's a white background when you do this. And there you go. And then you can s put him and do a multiply pass inside Photoshop. So, and if you guys want real quick, I can load that up and we can take a look. And I'll show you how I did the alien real quick. So, let's just go over to Photoshop and I'll show you how to blend these images in real quick. Okay, here we are in Photoshop here. And I'll show you the three different passes I did. If I get back into it, uh, still loading up. Sorry. Okay, I think Photoshop's about happy now. Okay, yeah. Alright, so I've got my basic mask pass. 
so I can uh, manipulate any little portion of it that I want. And then I've got that curve pass that I did, that I showed you. And then I've got the actual rendered. That's the how it came out of uh, Keyshot there. Oh, hello. Okay, it's happy again. Great. All right, so let me. Uh, well, almost there it goes. All right, so real quickly, we can just do a multiply on this layer here, and you can see. Let me zoom in here. Oh, come on. Okay. So you can see. Let me turn them on and off, so you can see what he's doing to them. He's adding in uh, a little more line action in some of the spots there, really uh, makes them pop. Uh, does some harsh uh, curves every once in a while, but you can always just do an image adjustments and just change your levels. You can change the output black a little bit. That'll lower that down. Turn the preview on. There we go. And that kind of fixes that there. Uh, you can. Just simple modifications there. Then you can just take uh, take both of these layers and convert them to a smart object. And you can go into Camera Raw Filter, and that's where a lot of the magic happens. I've been using it for years on my photos, and I've learned that it works really well in artwork too. So. And the newest one, newest thing that they got now is this dehaze, or dehaze. Yeah. Well, it really makes things pop. Uh, I, I used to do it a lot with uh, clarity, and now I use both. And then you can see it really makes that all that detail come out. It just it just pops like crazy. You know, you can up the highlights a bit. You can go and do some minor adjustments. You can do. Uh, this is just a radial, what is that called, radial filter. And then you can adjust things. Uh, usually I'll do like one on the exposure, bring up the highlights, bring up the clarity. And then I can go in and make certain areas pop a little bit more. Just go into the highlights there, make them pop. Uh, the teeth are a little dull, so we can go in and fix them up real quick eyes a little dull I mean photo editing doesn't have to take forever guys so and that's you know that's just a quick and dirty way I do things you know it only take me a few more minutes to get it close to get it uh, get it pretty close to where I had it on the original there but I'm not gonna bore you with all that but you can see at no time in Photoshop there you got a decent presentation to show off so I mean really cool technique guys I hope you get something out of it please please share it with me let me I, I like to see what people are doing with it uh, if you got newer ways to do it please let me know because I might be interested too I'm still learning so and I know you guys are still learning. Uh, appreciate all the support, all the likes, all the subscriptions. You guys have been wonderful. And uh, we will catch you next time, and hopefully with something even better. Thanks, guys.